Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean. Today I have a special guest over at the Timmy the Toolman Studios. His name is Rob. He hails from Corte Madera, California. And he came down today to shoot a video with us. And the video we're going to show you how to do is a clutch pedal rebuild, or you could consider it a clutch pedal replacement. Now, depending on how quickly you service your clutch pedal, it might be just a simple thing of replacing some bushings, a torsion spring, and you can salvage the clutch pedal. But if you let it go for too long, then the wear can get excessive on the clutch pedal, and then it's better to replace the clutch pedal also as part of this job. So the brains behind this job is not myself, it's Rob. He's done all the research for this job. He has experience with renewing parts on the clutch pedal on different vehicles. So I'm gonna turn it over to him. I'm gonna let him show you what he bought for the job and maybe explain some of the wear points that can happen when you don't catch it quick enough and it actually wears out the clutch pedal. Hi, I'm Rob and I'm going to go over the parts involved in the clutch pedal rebuild. These are the bushings for the ends of the torsion spring. This is the bushing for the center of the torsion spring. These are the shaft bushings that fit inside the actual clutch pedal. This is the torsion spring that fits into the clutch pedal. And then this is the gasket that goes between the clutch master cylinder on the outside of the firewall in the engine compartment. All right, so those are the parts that Rob bought for this job. Now let's get out to the truck and get started on this thing. We're in the engine compartment, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this EVAP canister so we can remove the clutch master cylinder to replace that gasket that helps makes a seal of the clutch master cylinder to the firewall, basically to prevent water from being able to get in. If you're a little bit worried about not being able to remember where the hoses go, you can mark them with some tape or you can mark them with a paint pen or you could just take a picture to remind yourself where everything goes. But when you look at how the hoses route and their stretch, it's gonna be kind of hard to mess it up, but just do whatever you think is gonna be necessary for you to be able to get everything back together properly. So Rob is gonna go for some of the vacuum hoses first. You saw that this one just slid off with his hands. If you find that any hose is giving you trouble, you can get in there with a pick tool to help separate it from the fitting. So he's got this little one right here. He's gonna go for this one right here. Okay, that one's disconnected. Now we have a couple of them that have hose clamps that we have to remove. He's gonna go for this one right here. A bent nose needle nose pliers is a good tool for this. So this one's fighting Rob a little bit. So you get the pick tool in between the hose and the fitting and you work it around the circumference and then you could break it free. Oh, wow. And there it is, it's free. He's gonna work on the next one that has a hose clamp. I think that's all the hoses. He's gonna have to disconnect this electrical connector. The push button is right there. And then we have this one plastic tab right here. He can get on there with a straight nose needle nose pliers and squeeze that and get that free. There's one more electrical plug right underneath this U-shaped hose. The tab that you have to push to release is facing downward. So you gotta hook your finger underneath and push it and then pull back towards the brake master cylinder and you can get it off. Now it looks like it's a series of 10 millimeter bolts and nuts we have to remove. There's one here on the driver's side fender there's another one here. There's another one right down here, which is a nut that attaches it to the top of the driver's side fender. And that looks like it is it. And then we can remove this out of our way. So then we have an easier time getting the clutch master cylinder pulled out. So to get those 10 millimeter bolts and, and that one 10 millimeter nut off, Rob's gonna use the Milwaukee M12 ratchet with a short 3 8 extension and a 10 millimeter socket. One thing that's nice to use when you're working on your vehicle is magnetic trays. When you put them in the tray, they stick to the tray and they won't go flying. It's also a nice way to organize your tools. The magnetic tray will securely grab onto the body and you can put your tools here. For this lower nut, he just added about a six inch extension so he can get down in here to grab that nut. 
All right, it looks like he'll just be able to pick that sucker up unless we miss something. And there it is, it's out of our way. Good job, bro. Boom. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna break free this line to the master cylinder. But before we do that, we're gonna try to extract as much of the brake fluid out of the clutch master cylinder to make less of a mess. And the tool we're gonna use for that is I have this Midivac fluid extractor. I've used it to suck out brake fluid from the brake master cylinder. I've used it to suck out fluid out of the power steering reservoir. It's a nice handy tool with a pretty good volume, much better than the small kind of medical syringes you can get at a medical supply store. So this is a nice option. So Rob is gonna remove the cap on the clutch master cylinder and then he's gonna suck some fluid out. There is a float in the clutch master cylinders. Rob is just gonna lift that out and then we're gonna start suctioning the fluid. He's gonna lift it up with a little pick tool so he can grab onto it easier. You might wanna use gloves for this if you're worried about getting cancer. Rob's an old guy, doesn't have many years left so he doesn't really care. <laughs> so am I, I'm an old codger too. All right, so here we go, suctioning some fluid out. So what do you do with the fluid? If you have an old container, then you can just put it into that container or you put it into some other type of container. What you don't want to do is just pour it out into the environment. You want to properly dispose of the old brake fluid. So we drain most of the brake fluid out of the clutch master cylinder and now we're going to break this fitting free. It's a 10 millimeter. You'll find that pretty much all your brake line connections are going to be a 10 millimeter and what you want to use for any type of line fitting, whether it's a brake line, clutch fluid line, or a fuel line, you always want to use a flare nut wrench because it grabs onto the nut much more positively and you'll have less of a chance of stripping it. This is a flex head version made by Gear Wrench, and he's going to get on there and break that line free. And then hopefully once you got it loose, you can get it off the rest of the way with your hands, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. You have to keep using the wrench. Now in preparation to where this disconnects from the clutch master cylinder, we have a 730 seconds vacuum cap that we're going to slide over the flared end of the tubing to reduce the amount of fluid that's going to leak out of the line. So you'll see that he's got the 730 seconds vacuum cap slipped over the flared end of the tubing. It doesn't go over the threads of the fitting, but rather just the flared end of the metal tubing. You'll notice also that we have some rags underneath here because brake fluid isn't kind to automotive paint. It will strip the paint off. It's a good paint remover. Protect your paint on the inside of your engine compartment and then also utilize something like this. This is a fender protector that you can put over your fender to protect from fluids and also to protect from getting scratches on your paint while you're wrenching. So the next fasteners we have to remove is a couple 12 millimeter nuts. One here, one down here that's a little bit harder to see. What we're gonna utilize to get those two 12 millimeter nuts free again is the Milwaukee M12 ratchet. We have about a six inch extension and we have a deep 12 millimeter socket. One thing you want to be careful is you don't lose the nut. All right, so now that we have those two 12 millimeter nuts holding the clutch master cylinder to the firewall, now we're gonna go inside the vehicle and we're gonna be like plumbers on our back, getting underneath the dashboard to do the rest of the job. Because it's really tight underneath here and only one person could be underneath on the driver's side working, I'm gonna show you what Rob is gonna do and then he's gonna perform it. And I'm going to try to capture it with the camera but no guarantee you're gonna be able to see because his hand or a tool might be in the way. We're going to remove this clip that hooks up to this rod that holds the clutch master cylinder plunger to the clutch pedal. So he's gonna slide that clip out and then he's gonna push this rod towards the left side of the vehicle and then he's going to be able to free this plunger from the clutch pedal. So Rob is utilizing a straight nose needle nose pliers to remove that clip. So that's what the clip looks like. 
So this is what the clutch pedal pin looks like that Rob just removed. So now with the pin disconnected from the clutch master cylinder plunger, Rob is going to grab a hold of the clutch master cylinder. He's going to use a rag to kind of cover this hole to make less of a mess. And he's going to pull straight back. I'm going to film from the inside and show you how it's going through the firewall. The next thing that we're going to disconnect is a couple electrical connectors and it's going to depend on your model if you're going to have one electrical connector or two. This frontmost one is the clutch start cancel switch. So basically it prevents you being able to start it without the clutch pedal depressed. So it prevents you from trying to start it with the vehicle in gear. So what this switch allows is when the clutch pedal is all the way released and you don't have it pushed in. It lets the cruise control system know that it can operate when you push the clutch pedal in and the plunger of the electrical connector is now not depressed it cancels the cruise control out so rob is now going to attack those electrical connectors he's going to go for the clutch start cancel switch first that one's disconnected and then the one back there a little harder to get to but you can get your hand in there Rob's hands are a little bit bigger than mine, so I'm gonna get in here and get this cruise control switch disconnected. The push button is facing the driver. You have to push it in and then just pull up. Okay, and I've got it disconnected. And you can see it right there. The last fastener we have to remove is behind the torsion spring. I'm pointing to it with the pointer. It's a 12 millimeter bolt. And then once that's released, we can pull this whole assembly out with the bracket all attached. So what Rob is gonna use to break free that 12 millimeter bolt that holds that bracket to the body is he's gonna use my 3 8 gear wrench flex head ratchet. The flex head actually helps a little bit to get in there to where you can turn it. And then he's gonna transition to the little shorty ratchet which is much better in tight areas to get fasteners free. <laughs> Okay, he broke it free. Now he's gonna transition to the little shorty flex head ratchet and he's gonna get it out the rest of the way. He's supporting the whole assembly with his left hand because once he gets that free, it's gonna drop. So there's the bolt that he removed. Here we come, here we come. There it is, yay! Good job, Rob. So here's the whole clutch pedal assembly removed from the vehicle. The last fastener that Rob removed is right here. This held it to the underside of the dashboard. You have the cruise control switch here. You have the clutch pedal cancel switch here. You've got your torsion spring. You've got the little bushings that the ends of the torsion spring sit in. You can see an edge of the bushing right there. And here's the location of the other bushing that interfaces with the middle of the spring. It fits in right here. And this is pretty much the anatomy and physiology of a clutch pedal assembly for a third gen 4Runner. To make it easier to work on the clutch pedal assembly, we're gonna secure it in my bench vise. We're gonna clamp it on this part of the stud. Don't clamp it on the threads and mess up the threads. Clamp it on the ends right here that are just basically smooth metal. Okay, the pedal is in the normal or up position. It's better to actually put it in the depressed position because the spring is less wound up. So it's, there's basically less preload on the spring and it'll be removed easier. It won't go flying out. So the first step is we're gonna take one of the side tangs out of the bracket and the bushing. And we're gonna use some channel locks just to keep it under control. So what Rob did is he actually grabbed the whole side of this spring, compressed it in. So you're basically just squeezing the spring coils against each other to where you can get the end out. He just popped it out of the center and then he was able to pull the opposite side out pretty easy. So as soon as you get one side free, then the rest of it goes pretty simple. So that's what's left of that bushing that interfaces with the center of the spring. 
The next thing we're going to remove is these bushings that the torsion spring interface with. And we're going to take a punch that's going to be able to contact the face of the bushing and we're going to knock it inboard. If you didn't have a punch big enough to hit the face of the bushing, then you can maybe just do it with a screwdriver or whatever other way you can MacGyver to get these out. They're not in there that tough. And there it is. That one's out and he's going to get the other one out. The next thing we're going to remove is the bolt and nut that hold the clutch pedal to the clutch pedal bracket. There is a 15 millimeter nut with the lock washer on this side. And then you have the head of the bolt on this side, both 15 millimeter. So Rob is going to get on there with a couple different ratchets. On this side, he's going to have a deep socket. And then the other side, he's just going to have a regular short socket. That sucker is on there pretty tight. Oh well. He had to use his man strength to get that <laughs> off. Slide the bolt out on that side. And then that sucker comes out just like that. On the pedal disassembly, we need to take the bushings and there's a sleeve where the bolt went through it. And the sleeve just slips right out with the bushings. So when you get a new clutch pedal, there's parts that attach to the clutch pedal that you don't get. If you found that the rubber piece that you push with your foot is worn out, you can get that piece. And there's a couple plastic tabs that interface with the electrical switches that could also be worn out. You might want to replace those also. All three of these look good on Rob's old clutch pedal, so he's going to reuse them. First, we're going to take the pedal pad off, and that's just, you can do that by hand. It's just rubber and it just stretches over the clutch pedal. And then the two little bumpers or cushions, they're almost like an interior clip. You have to kind of squeeze them to get them out of the hole. And hopefully I don't break them. On. There's one. Here's what it looks like. It's got the little plug that you have to free with the needle nose pliers. You might want to do this in a bench vise to hold it steady while you're doing this. I'm holding it for him so it's steady. And so hopefully if you were gentle with this, you didn't ruin them. So now let's talk about the wear that Rob was talking about at the beginning of the video. This area right here that that bushing goes in where it interfaces with the center part of the spring is ovalized out. This underside right here, this is additional wear from metal on metal contact. And so you might find that your clutch pedal is in this position and realize hey, it's probably going to be best for me to replace the clutch pedal rather than try to just put a new bushing in because it's not going to interface well with it ovalized out like this. The other wear that we're going to show you is on the spring itself. The ovalization of the clutch pedal is because the metal spring was able to go metal on metal with the clutch pedal and wear it out. The bushing, when it's intact, is preventing that wear. So you can see a groove right here that has been eaten away from the metal on metal contact. All right, so now we're gonna start transferring the parts over to the new clutch pedal. First, we're gonna put the plastic bumpers that are for the electrical switches. And this is for the pedal up switch for the cruise control. So it needs to go in this direction. So it's gonna go in that hole on this side, snap. And then this one is for the clutch start cancel switch when the pedal's fully depressed. So it needs to go on this side. And then we're going to put the pedal pad back on. And that can be done by hand also. Okay, so now we're going to put the bushings for the sleeve and the shaft, the main axle of the clutch pedal. And those bushings just slip in here. And we're going to put a little bit of grease on the shaft so that the shaft spins in the bushings. The bushings actually have a little blood groove in them for grease. So we actually could put a little bit in the bushings. You don't need a ton. The grease that Rob is using, this is just a multi-purpose grease made by Red Devil. It's actually meant for bicycle applications, but it's going to work fine for this. And we'll put a little bit on the shaft just for good measure. So you get a nice smooth operation and then send it through. There we go. 
line up the tube that's on the clutch pedal with the holes in the bracket so that the sleeve lines up with these holes and we're going to put the bolt in and send the bolt all the way through and you can just let the pedal hang we're going to put the lock washer back on then we're going to put the nut back on the bolt on top of the lock washer and then we're going to tighten that down real tight we looked for a torque spec in the factory service manual. We couldn't find one. So like usual, we're gonna use that German spec of good, good and, tight and tight and call it good. Next, we're going to install the new bushings in the pedal and the pedal bracket. So this is the one for the pedal, the little black saddle. And that fits right into that slot the way it should and it's going to stay there and then the ones on either side of the bracket just press into these bosses the bushings that go in the bracket are a little bit tight because they're new and they have a little bit if you feel them they almost feel like they're flared at the end so they snap in and don't fall back out so we're going to use a needle nose to get them in just get them started there we go So just like you saw Rob do, these bushings fit in pretty darn tight. So utilize the tool of your choice. The needle nose pliers work pretty good. At first you can grab right in the center, but then when the bushing starts to protrude, you have to grab the flange of the inside of the bushing, but then grab the metal here. So you allow the bushing to be able to push out a little bit on the side. I'd work side to side so you get a better chance of getting it seated. And then maybe at the very end you just use your man strength and push it in to where it snaps. Just remember that the bushing goes from the inside out, not the other way around. Okay, next we're gonna grease the bushings at the contact points with the spring and I'll just make sure everything's quiet also reduce any wear so we're going to put a little bit of grease down in the small one that's on the clutch pedal itself and don't worry about putting too much grease you can always wipe it off later and then we're going to put some in each of the side bushings in the sheet metal just kind of fill them up we can wipe off that excess later and now to put the spring in i usually start with the center because if you start with one side it's difficult to get this part of the spring really seated in that bushing now i'm going to put one side into the pedal bracket and i'm going to do the first side by hand because i think i can and there it is it's in the bushing i got the first side in just by hand and now the second side the last side we're going to try to get it in with the channel locks so rob's got the channel locks capturing the whole side of the spring he's going to compress it in and then he has to rotate it forward towards me to get the end of the spring in and that's it that's how you do it compress it in and then you have to force it this way to get that end in and the torsion spring is now installed and after you get it in, just double check that it's working like it should, and it is. We're now done doing all the work to renew the clutch pedal assembly. Now we gotta get this sucker back in the vehicle. Reversing our procedure, Rob's gonna get underneath the dash with the whole clutch pedal assembly. He's gonna align these studs that the clutch master cylinder hook up to, and then he's gonna get the 12 millimeter bolt that holds the whole assembly up underneath the dash. I'm filming from the top. We're going to see the studs coming through of the whole assembly. Okay, he's got it lined up. Now I'm going to go underneath and show you what he's doing there. Okay. So now that we have the 12 millimeter bolt hand tight, we're choosing not to tighten it all the way just yet because we think we might have some alignment issues when it comes to getting the master cylinder hooked back up to the studs. We're just gonna leave it hand tight for now in case we have to do some manipulation. So now we're gonna get the clutch master cylinder back connected to the firewall. 
you can see the remnants of the old gasket it's all torn to pieces when getting this gasket in place you'll notice that it's not symmetrical one side is a little bit longer than the other side so this gasket could only go on one way rob's going to be on top sliding it through the firewall i'm going to show you what's happening from underneath the dash here's where it would be nice to have a friend helping you so i'm going to make sure that the forks line up with the clutch pedal and then now we know it's in there correctly so here's a trick that comes in really handy when you don't want to take a chance and lose a fastener somewhere in your vehicle you put a piece of black tape or whatever tape you have over the socket you force the bolt or the nut on there and it holds it steady while you get into a tight area to get the fastener started so he's going to force the nut into the socket now it's not able to fall out of the socket and he's going to get one of them started Just at this hand. point we're just going to cinch them up hand tight and not get it cinched up snug all the way in case we have to do some manipulation down below to get the plunger connected to the clutch pedal we're going to have a little bit of movement available so now we're going to put the pin back in which attaches the plunger on the master cylinder to the clutch pedal and we just cleaned it up a little bit I noticed that it has a little wave washer, so it has some tension so it doesn't rattle around. So you might want to take care and don't lose that. Don't let that fall off. This one didn't fall off because it had grease all over it. So we're just going to put a little grease on that, send it on back through the pedal, and put the clip back on. He's utilizing the same Red Devil grease that we use for the other bushings. You might have to push the pedal a little bit to get the pin through. But there it is, and we put the clip back in, snap. So now we're going to tighten fully the nuts that hold the master cylinder to the firewall. Rob is going to use my little short 3 8 ratchet with a 6 inch extension and a deep 12 millimeter socket. And again, we don't have a torque spec for this, but we're just going to go by feel. Just know that these are a small fastener. The longer the lever that you have, basically the longer handle of the ratchet, the more force you can apply. So we're purposely using a short handled ratchet so we can't apply too much force. Hey Rob. Are they good and tight? They're good and tight. <laughs> All right. Okay, now back underneath the dash. So now Rob is going to finish tightening that 12 millimeter bolt that holds the clutch pedal assembly underneath the dash. Once you got it cinched up with a small ratchet and it's pretty much all the way tight, you might want to get in there with a longer ratchet to get a little more leverage to get it a little bit tighter. All right, we have the bracket securely attached underneath the dash. Now we're going to get those electrical connectors reconnected. First, it's the clutch start cancel switch, the down, and then the cruise control switch. There we go. Both electrical connectors are back reconnected. We're now done with everything we have to do underneath the dashboard. Now we're back in the engine compartment and Rob is going to get the clutch fluid line back connected to the master cylinder. If you followed our lead, remove your vacuum cap off the end of the tubing and then get it started in the master cylinder. Start it finger tight so you don't cross thread it. Words of wisdom from Rob, make sure that this thing starts by hand as much as possible to let you know you haven't cross threaded it and now get on there with your flare nut wrench and cinch it up that's good okay it's good and tight so now we're going to get the evap canister back connected inside the engine compartment and all the vacuum tubes and the electrical connectors back reconnected So he first lined up that stud on the top of the driver's side fender and then we're going to get all the fasteners reconnected. Got the nut started there and now he's going to get the two 10 millimeter bolts that attach the evap canister to the driver's side fender.
No torque value for these either. We're just gonna get them snug and call it good. So now we're gonna get all the hoses and electrical connectors connected back to this EVAP canister. As you saw, it's pretty straightforward getting it all connected back up. So now that the EVAP canister is back connected, we are gonna refill the clutch master cylinder with brake fluid and we're gonna go through the bleeding procedure. We're now gonna fill up the master cylinder with some fresh brake fluid. The cap will tell you the grade of brake fluid you're supposed to use. So it's dot three, just like the brake fluid you use in your brake master cylinder. Be careful when you're doing this. Don't spill it on your paint and cause some damage. If you don't have a steady hand, you might want to use a funnel or maybe suck some up into a syringe and then transfer it to the clutch master cylinder. Rob has a steady enough hand. He's just going to pour it right from the container. Also, don't take the foil off. Just make a little hole. It helps. Yeah, he just made a little hole in the foil so he can control it better. He's going to put the float back in there and then put the cap back on. We're underneath the vehicle, we're on the driver's side of the transmission, and you'll see the clutch slave cylinder. And you'll see the little bleed nipple on the left side. Same procedure that you would do for bleeding the brakes. The person inside the vehicle pumps the brake pedal, they hold the brake pedal to the floor, person underneath the vehicle opens up the bleeder, lets some fluid and air out, they close off the bleeder, and then they tell the person inside the vehicle to lift up on the pedal and pump it again and repeat that procedure. Okay, Rob, pump the clutch pedal. Let me know when you're holding. Okay, holding. Okay, I'm gonna open the bleeder. Okay, pump it up again. Okay, hold it. Okay, pump it up again. Okay, hold it. Got a little air there. Let's check the level. All right, we topped off the master cylinder. We're going to continue on with the bleed procedure. Pump it up, Rob. Okay, hold. Got more air out. Keep going. Hold. More air came out, keep going. Hold. More air. Pump it up. Hold. Still more air. Pump it up. Hold. Still more air. Pump it up. Hold. Little more air. Let's double check the level of the master cylinder. We topped off the master cylinder again. Go ahead, Rob, pump it up. Hold, still getting air out, pump it up. Hold, not as much air, I think we're getting pretty close. Pump it up again. I'm seeing more movement from the slave cylinder too. Okay, hold. Still got air, pump it up again. Hold. Okay, I didn't detect any air on that one. Let's do it a couple more times, go ahead. Okay, that again was clean fluid, no air, do it again. Let's do it one more. I still think I've detected a little air, so keep going again. Okay, hold. I think that might be good. Do it one more time. Hold. I think that's got it. Once you're confident that you got all the air out of the system, top off your clutch master cylinder again to the full mark. Put your cap back on. And then now what you do is you take it for a test drive and fingers <laughs> crossed, everything is working properly. It's shifting gears properly and we can call this job done. One thing you wanna make sure is you check your engine compartment really well. You didn't leave any tools on top of the motor, any rags, anything that's gonna get caught up in your belts and kinda ruin your day. All right, so Rob, you just got done with the test drive. What do you think are the results? Like totally different. It's 
you know, super smooth, you know, doesn't feel like metal on metal. Yeah, totally worth doing it. I guess Rob is giving this I'm a thumbs it up. A super thumbs up. Maybe yeah. two thumbs yeah. up. Yeah. All right, so we're all done with this job. It was a success. Rob is very pleased with the results. As you saw, it's a little bit of work and if you don't have the most flexibility and maybe if you're a bigger guy, getting underneath that dashboard is going to be a little bit problematic. If you got some big meat hooks, then getting in there to get the electrical connectors disconnected underneath the dash might give you some problems. Maybe get someone smaller in there. Maybe get your wife underneath the dashboard or get a little friend and throw him underneath the dashboard. Just beware of that plumber's crack. You don't want to get that plumber's crack in your face because that would be a bad thing. Rob said he spent somewhere in the neighborhood of about $90 for this job. In the video description, we are gonna provide some links for you and you can use those links to purchase the parts if you'd like to, or you just do your research and find the parts from somewhere else. With all that said, we thank you for watching Toyota Time with Timmy the Toll Man and Sean and special guest Rob. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below. Take care, bye bye. Sick mods, sick clutch pedal replacement or rebuilds. Bye bye. Peace out. Happy ranching.